on the show Lucifer, the title character, Lucifer Morningstar, also known as the devil, decides he's tired of causing pain and torturing people and ruling over hell and decides to take a pleasure vacation to L.A., where he engages in every kind of delicious, decadent, debaucherous kind of pleasure-seeking that L.A. can offer. And he still has some of his supernatural powers, but mostly how he's using them is to interrupt ne'er-do-wells doing something like, I don't know, like a bank heist or something like that. And rather than the petty criminal shit that they're engaging in, he goes up to them and he asks them, what is it you desire? As in like deeply desire, not this nonsense that you're engaging in right now, but what is it you really want? And the responses are all these really sweet, quirky, deep longings, these wishes inside their bodies. And then they're inspired by the devil to go off and engage in whatever like is actually going to be super pleasurable for them rather than the kind of basic stuff that they've been engaging in. So my questions for you this time are, what do you desire? What does desire feel like in your body? And how do you direct your desire? Hi, this is Sarah Russell. I'm a relationship coach, dancer, and Taoist. In every episode, I'll be talking about psychedelics, well-being, or the human experience. And this one is on cultivating your sexual energy, part two. And the first part was really about clearing out kind of that body shame, any stuck, stagnant energy that wasn't serving you, really clearing out so that you had space to cultivate the kind of energy that you want. And this episode is going to focus more on self-cultivation. I promise partner stuff is coming next. So we know sexual energy is incredibly powerful, right? That's why religions and governments really try to control the way we express our sexual energy. And we know corporations and capitalism are constantly trying to exploit our sexual energy for profit. Sex sells. It sells all kinds of things, things you wouldn't even expect it to sell. It's a really easy, kind of cheap way to get our attention, right? And we have this culture set up then that really misuses and misdirects this powerful energy within us rather than honoring this generative, creative sexual potential inside of us. Understanding how we cultivate our sexual energy, understanding how we direct it, how others direct it, is a way to have more intentionality around how we use our sexual energy. And when we have more intentionality, not only do we increase the possibility for more pleasure in our lives, but we also increase the possibility of doing less harm to others. And there's this really sweet concept in the kink community, and that's the idea of engaging sexually in a committed, compassionate, and consensual way. And what that means is we are compassionately and consensually committed to each other's emotional and physical best interests. So when we're using our sexual energy, whether we're directing it towards ourselves or directing it towards somebody else, we're doing that in a committed and consensual way where we're compassionately engaging with each other or towards ourselves. And when we can build awareness around consensuality, around what compassion is, around how we want to direct our energy, it means that with all of this awareness, we can build, direct, and disperse our energy in this really conscious way. Okay, but in order to build awareness, we need to be with what is. Not what we wish was true, not what used to be true, not what might be true in the future, although we can have goals for ourselves. We really want to first start with what is. And what's really beautiful about the body is that it is in the present moment always, right? You've probably heard me say this before, that the mind can time travel to the future. It can time travel to the past, but the body is always here in the present moment. So in order to build present moment awareness, we can start with the body. And one of the units of experience in the body is sensation. So to start building awareness, you can start tracking sensation in your body. Specifically, what does desire feel like in your body? And we can go through this in a few different ways. You can think about what desire, how it moves in your body. Is it buzzy? Is it pulsing? Is it streaming? Is it tingling? Does it flow? So how does desire move through your body? You can also think about where it's located, like where do you feel it in your body, the place, right? We can think about the texture of that energy in your body. You can also think about the temperature. Um, If you've ever had that flush of heat or if all of a sudden you have like a coolness in your mouth, what parts of your body warm up? What parts of your body cool down? 
are you noticing those temperature changes in your body? And then you can also think about pressure. So pressure can be light. It can be heavy. It can be empty. It can be full. Something can be tense. Something can be relaxed. So how does desire express itself in your body in a sensation-based way? And notice that all of those words that I just used, they have no value judgments, right? It's not like warm is better than cool or light is better than heavy. This is really just an exploration and curiosity about what is so that you're building awareness with your actual experience rather than the experience you think you should be having. And that should, you know, usually comes laden with some kind of shame. So we're getting shame out of this and just having curiosity. And then... How does sexual energy make you feel emotionally? And again, like we have this very strange, um, obscene, sacred kind of sex culture where like on one, on one hand, we're selling things with sex all the time. So sex is in our faces constantly. And then we also have this kind of puritanical culture where then we're supposed to keep things behind closed doors or there's all these restrictions and limitations and taboos on our sexual expression. So there's this push-pull constantly happening so how does sex actually make you feel? Sexual desire actually make you feel? Again, with curiosity, not with judgment. Like what is your actual experience, not the experience you think you should be having? Having. Do you feel connected and confident and excited and warm and open? Do you feel frustrated or irritated or uncomfortable? All of those things are valid and some of those things might be happening simultaneously. You might be slightly irritated and slightly turned on at the same time and that's confusing. So we want to create space for what is in all its complexity, with all its joy, with all its grief, with all its confusion. So get really clear not just on the sensations but also the emotions. So what you're feeling physically, what you're feeling emotionally in your body. If you're noticing that what you're feeling is more negative, again, I highly recommend listening to part one of this where I talk more about clearing. Something else I'm offering to the Mudwater family is I'm, I've created a series of podcasts that are based on Montauk Chia's healing sounds. And those healing sounds are a fantastic way to clear out anything that's stuck or stagnant or stale or uncomfortable in your body. So look for those coming out soon. I'll also be doing an Instagram live where I'll be taking you through the entire practice. So keep your eye out for that. Keep your ears open for that um, to be able to do this clearing practice. But again, like even just going through and noticing those negative emotions is bringing awareness, which is going to help them shift just that, that level of paying attention. Okay, but let's say you've done your clearing already. You've been with what is, you've noticed it, you've named it, you've cleared what isn't working now we get to cultivate it. And we know that the biggest sex organ in the body is the brain. So what's your fantasy? And when I say what's your fantasy, what is what is your desire in all of this? We tend to censor our sexual fantasies. And even when I'm talking about that, it reminds me of um, this series of porn that is called I think it's called taboo it goes taboo and it's all of these scenarios where it like plays with power dynamics and things that shouldn't be happening you know exactly what I'm talking about it's the boss that's hitting on the co-worker you know the subordinate in some way it's the stepbrother and stepsister it's all those like oh like I shouldn't be thinking about that that shouldn't be turning me on but it does and so what is your actual sexual fantasy? Recognizing that we're still in the realm of imagining. We're not doing this right now. And I feel like a lot of people, like there's this cultural conditioning to not want what we want to begin with. But then there's also this fear that if we actually acknowledge what we want, we're going to become like, like just sexual monsters and we're just going to be completely out of control and like libido is just going to be all over the place and, and we're not going to be able to control ourselves anymore. I actually think that by turning towards your desires and by bringing awareness to them, you actually make that less likely because you have all this awareness and with awareness comes more choice. And so, you know, there's this Carl Jung quote who sa- and he says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And so we actually want to turn towards our fantasies so that we can build more awareness around them so that we can work with them with intentionality. 
Um, rather than being alarmed by whatever our fantasies are and just assuming that because we're acknowledging what they are, we're immediately going to act on it, right? Like you might have a fantasy about another person or a particular scenario. And you know me, I'm a relationship anarchist. I don't like this escalator kind of stuff where, oh, because I thought about it, now I need to do it. Now that I've done it, done it I need to commit to it for a long time. Like sometimes it's just enough to have the pleasure of thinking about something. And if we shame ourselves about what turns us on, we're only increasing the likelihood that it's going to get twisted in our bodies in some way and then come out in some way that's not great for us, that's not great for other people. Um, okay, so when you're coming up with your fantasy, there are all kinds of ways you can do this, right? You can just sit there and think about it. You can write it down. You can read erotic literature. You can create a sexy playlist. You can create a mood board. You can eat known aphrodisiacs. Um, you know, I talked about Jing in one of my previous podcasts. Jing is this kind of sexual energy, right? That was in part one. Oysters are known to increase Jing energy in the body. So go eat some raw oysters or put an extra scoop of chocolate in your mud. That's one of my favorite things to do. Like get a little bit of that aphrodisiac hit through your food or watch your favorite porn. And here's the thing. I know that porn gets a bad rap and for good reason. It can sometimes be a really reductive, oversimplified version, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of version of what sex is. Um, Montauk Chia has this quote where he's like, why does everyone talk about screwing? Um, most of y'all are jackhammering. Nobody's screwing. Like we're not doing these circular motions with their hips, right? It's just this kind of like pounding motion. Again, I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying sometimes porn shows one version or one type. But if you branch out in your porn exploration, y'all know it gets real creative out there. And um, if you like to laugh during your porn consumption, I have to highly recommend Game of Bones. Yes, that is a Game of Thrones porn parody. I'm not saying it's quality, but it is hysterical. It, it is really funny. I digress. Um, so anyways, you can figure out what your sexual fantasies are in all these different ways, like visually eating something touching something maybe you want to rub velvet over your skin or a feather maybe you need to change the lighting in some way like have it be a sensory experience while you're exploring your fantasies so we're turning our attention towards our sexual fantasies as a way to make the unconscious conscious because when something's conscious we have more choice so we're really acknowledging what those fantasies are okay now we're going to get to a bit of a physical practice around all of this. So a way to increase our sexual energy, to cultivate our sexual energy. And remember, this is self-cultivation that we're talking about during this episode. Partners coming later. Don't worry. You know those like um, NSFWs, not suitable for work? This is suitable for work, what you're about to do. Maybe not what I'm saying. I don't know that you want to blast this like from your cubicle or wherever it is that you're working from. Um, but you can do this practice because it's a subtle practice. You can do it in your car. You can do it at work. You can do it in the restaurant. And nobody's going to know if you do it the way that I teach you how to do it. And with all of the practices that I teach, I always want you to start with your breath. So you want to be breathing through this entire practice. So go ahead and start breathing in and out through your nose. If you need to do an extra little bit of clearing because this is getting you excited, go ahead and exhale out through your mouth. You can get rid of some of that energy if you feel like you need to. Um, and please self-cultivate responsibly, right? Don't be doing this anywhere where you're going to be making somebody uncomfortable. But again, if you're doing it the way I'm teaching you, like you can just kind of do it whenever. Um, so we are going to do some pelvic floor pull-ups. Um, your pelvic floor is your sex muscle, right? The sex muscle is the muscle that contracts if, let's say, you were peeing and all of a sudden you were going to stop the flow of urine, that muscle that you contract to stop the flow, that's your sex muscle. So if you're having a hard time kind of like feeling into what that is, the next time you're peeing, go ahead and try to stop the flow of urine. That's one of the ways that you can get some of your reps in. And by contracting that muscle, we're increasing blood flow to this pelvic region, which can increase your sexual energy. So again, you're breathing through your nose. And you can try this the entire rest of the time that I'm talking to you. You can do this as many times as you want. But go ahead and lightly pull up on your pelvic floor and just see what that feels like for you. And it can be helpful to do this like three times. Like you can pull up, relax, pull up, relax, pull up, relax. Notice how that was for you if you did it. 
And you can do this in sets of three. You can do it nine times. You can do it 18 times. You know, Dallas like to do it in threes. <laughs> um, but do it as many times as, feel good, as feels good for you. You can fatigue your pelvic floor. So watch out for that. And um, if when you're pulling up on your pelvic floor, you notice that your muscles automatically want to relax, let them. Like this isn't about forcing, right? This is about exploring. And Rome wasn't built in a day and you don't have to become a pelvic floor pull-up champion overnight. This is a practice that can build. But if you're noticing that that was easy for you, if you're like, oh yeah, I know where my pelvic floor is. Like it was totally easy to do those squeezes. You can start challenging yourself by starting to hold that contraction, let's say for up to 10 seconds, right? So you can squeeze and you can hold, counting down 10, 9, 8, 7, are you breathing? 6, 5, are you making funny faces? 4, 3, 2, one, relax. And again, if you needed to relax before that, that's fine. Um, but again, if you're going to be doing this in a public place, I highly recommend you're not raising your eyebrows or clenching your butt or squeezing your teeth together because then people are going to know you're doing something. They're going to wonder what's going on. So when you're doing this, we're trying to isolate the pelvic floor. We're trying to isolate that sex muscle. So you want to keep breathing. And I know during that 10 second hold, you're like, wait, what? How am I going to continue breathing? Trust me, it's possible. You can do it. It just takes practice. And again, you don't want to be making all of these faces while you're doing it. Try to relax your face. Try to relax your breathing. Keep breathing and really try to concentrate and isolate on your pelvic floor. And then if that feels easy for you, you can start building reps in, right? So you can squeeze the pelvic floor for 10 seconds. Give yourself a um, a little bit of relaxation, take a couple baseline breaths in between, and then squeeze it again for 10 seconds. You can do three sets of 10 seconds. You can work your way up to nine sets of 10 seconds, really building that sex muscle, building the strength in it, right? So the rest of this podcast, go ahead and practice that if you want to. Don't worry. I can't see you doing it. As long as you're not making faces, be cool about it. Um, then as this energy starts to build, right, as we're increasing blood flow, as we're increasing the strength of this area, then eventually what we're going to do is we're going to take that energy through something called our microcosmic orbit, where we're pulling it up the back of the body, sending it down the front body. Um, that's a meditation I'll also be recording for you. So as you're on the lookout for future rest meditations, know that the microcosmic orbit is the next place we can take this. I won't be taking you through that today. For right now, I just want you practicing strengthening your pelvic floor. <sighs> okay. But in addition to strengthening your pelvic floor, um, some of us, we don't actually need to make this area stronger. We actually need to be able to relax it a little bit, right? And if we're squeezing in the pelvic floor area, the likelihood is you're also squeezing your ass. So we have all of these phrases like you're a tight ass, you have a stick up your ass because you're squeezing that anal sphincter, you're squeezing your pelvic floor and everything's super tense and contracted down there. So we want to be able to relax that area. Um, side note, when I first started coaching and my teacher was supervising me with my practice clients, I would have this very excited up and forward kind of breathless, like, yeah, let me fix that for you. I've got all the solutions. I know what you should do kind of energy. And she told me, Sarah, I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to sit back in your chair and I want you to relax your anal sphincter. It works, y'all. It brings relaxation. It helps you be more calm. It helps you be more spacious. So if you're having a hard time relaxing this area, sit back, take a deep breath, and relax your anal sphincter. Now, you know that sometimes sex is really fun if you're like, yeah, I've got a goal. I know how to make myself come. I'm going to... It's like um, like those ultra marathoners, right? Where you're like, I'm just going to get through this and do it. That's fine. That's great. But there's also this other experience when you're open and you're relaxed and you're going with the flow and you're meandering. That kind of sexual experience is different and also worthwhile. So in order to also be open and relaxed and have that as an option, I'm also going to show you how to relax this area in addition to contracting it. 
So go ahead and start with that baseline breath again. Keep breathing in through your belly, your ribs, your chest. Keep breathing out through your nose. Again, if you want to exhale through your mouth for a little bit of an extra release, go ahead and do that. And as you inhale, oh, wait, caveat, before we go any farther, for this next part, if you need to pee, if you need to go empty your bladder, do that because I'm going to have you bear down a little bit, you know, like, unless you're into water sports, uh, golden showers, maybe now is not the time, right? So go ahead and empty your bladder before you do this next part. Little, little caveat emptor. Empty bladders, deep breathing. Okay. As you inhale, you're going to lightly contract your pelvic floor. And as you exhale, you're going to push your pelvic floor down out. So you're kind of bearing down a little bit. Inhale, lightly pull up. Exhale, push it out and down. And just kind of go back and forth, that up and down, moving it up and down, back and forth. And notice what that feels like. And you can do that for a few breaths, noticing what it's like to pull it in, noticing what it's like to push it out. And then after you've done that a few times, completely relax. And notice the difference between what it's like to pull up and hold what it's like to push out, and then what it's like to just let it broaden, let it widen, let it relax entirely. So look at all these options we have now. We can contract, we can push out, we can relax, like, ooh, like all these options, fun. Um, it helps to be able to have this kind of flexibility, mutability to come from all of this choice, all of this awareness, so we can really direct our sexual experience. Okay, so now you've built up the sexual energy, right? Like maybe feeling some heat, maybe feeling some warmth, warmth, maybe feeling some of that movement that I was talking about. This is a really great place to start exploring yourself. So you might want to think about all the different levels of touch, right? There's blowing, there's licking, there's sucking, there's kissing, there's scratching, there's biting, all these different kinds of ways. Have you experimented on this with yourself? You know, you just like like blow. Ooh, was I like that? Changed my temperature. Ooh, I like that licking sensation. Play, right? Play with your own body so that by the time you're engaging with somebody else, you know yourself so well because you've done all the things with yourself already. Mm, sexy. All right. Then you can also think about what kind of pressure do you like? Do you like things a little harder? Do you like things a little softer? Do you like it to be varied? Um, again, with the tempo, do you like it fast? Do you like it slow? Do you like to change it up? Do you like to know what's coming? Do you need it to be consistent? Like just keep doing that thing or like surprise me. I don't even want to know what's coming next. Just take me on an adventure. Again, you're taking yourself on an adventure right now. And move at your pace. Um, you might want to collect, like I was saying, different things. Um, the velvet, the feathers, something scratchy, something wet, something hot, something cold. There is this really um, sweet trick that I learned as a teenager where there are these um, U-shaped bobby pins. So it's not like the regular bobby pins that you see with the little like um, wiggly part on the top and the flat bottom. These are a U-shaped bobby pin. And I read probably in Cosmo or something like that, that if you drag the bobby pin along your body, anywhere that you feel both points of the bobby pin touching, so two points of contact is an erogenous zone for you. And anytime you just feel one, that's not an erogenous zone for you. And I have no idea how true that is, but I can tell you it's really fun to play with. I mean, like, oh, I think I feel two. Oh, um, and you know, you can do that with a partner too. Like, oh, do you feel two? Do you feel one? But again, we're focusing on ourselves this time. Um, anyways, I'm saying get things, go play. There was one time I went to the dollar store and I just grabbed a bunch of wild random stuff just to see what it would feel like. It's fun. Trust me. So this is an exploration and as you're exploring, you're really coming from curiosity, not shame, not preconceptions, not what culture has tried to sell you sex should look, feel, smell, taste like, but what is actually titillating for you? What's erotic for you? What builds desire for you? Let yourself get weird with it. Let yourself explore all of the different possibilities. And then 
when after you've done all of this, after you've done all of your exploration, I think it's really sweet to put your hands somewhere on your body, feel kind weight, feel kind warmth. Maybe your hands are over your heart. Maybe they're over your belly, maybe over your eyes, maybe hands on your thighs and just breathe with yourself and give yourself gratitude for the fact that you took time to be curious about yourself and your desire to explore yourself and your desire. What an incredible act of love towards yourself to spend this time with yourself. (sighs) Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, it is such a big help if you go to iTunes and leave a review or leave stars wherever you listen to podcasts. Y'all, the reviews you've been leaving me are so sweet. And I got to tell you, they're really helpful because those reviews are part of what makes this podcast possible. It's what allows me to keep creating this content that I love sharing with all of you. And you can check out trendswithbenefits.com. I have written work there. My fellow host of Trends with Benefits, Kyle, has worked there, as well as a bunch of other wonderful content creators, all kinds of information from how to do a tech detox to how to forage your own wild food. You can also sign up for our newsletter. It's a weekly dose of all this good, good that we are trying to give you, to support you, to encourage you, to uplift you. And if you have any relationship questions that you have for me that you would like answered on this podcast, you can record a one to two minute voice memo and email your question in and email it to podcast at mudwtr.com. And don't worry, if you want to remain anonymous, you can give me your code name, pen name, stage name, superhero name. You don't have to tell me who you really are, but we will hear your voice, just so you know. And then for all of you who like getting down in the mud, you can tell us your favorite way to prepare your mud water. Me personally, I like to put a little dash of rose in there because it's good for that heart energy. But if you record, again, a one to two minute voice memo, email it to podcast at mudwtr.com and we play it on the air, we'll ship you a free mud water mug. So go ahead and include your address in the email that you send us so we can send you that. Thanks as always for listening and happy exploring.